everyone. Thank you for joining me in this video. Today I'm finally going to go over all the patterns that I've used in this last year and give you a review on each one that I've done. So it's just a little more of an in-depth look at each of the patterns that I didn't happen to mention in the videos that I was making them in. I just had a baby in February and I made a few patterns where I couldn't actually try them on. Obviously they would not have fit me. So I had to wait until recently to where I can finally get back into them and see how they actually fit in general when I try them on compared to how they looked on the mannequin. So I'm just gonna jump right in and we'll start because I have quite a few that I actually did make in this past year. So the first one I want to talk about is the Buzz Lightyear dress that I made with the Simplicity 8237. When I tried this on, I loved it. As much as I knew I would when I made it and I finished it and I wanted to hop right into it and I couldn't, I can't remember anything being too confusing. It was a pretty straightforward pattern. There is a ton of fabric in this dress and it is a little bit heavy. And especially with all the ruffles and the gallows in the skirt, I really didn't feel the need to add a petticoat to it, especially how the pattern does say to add like crinoline or something underneath from what I remember. It really didn't need it. It fit pretty well. The size was perfect. It fit me great everywhere for my body. And I loved it. I can't wait to wear this. Maybe I'll wear it for Halloween for a different event. I know I Halloween's my favorite holidays so I have like a million ideas I want to do this year but if you sew a lot you know that it does take quite a bit of time to make something so I'm glad I have these extra outfits and costumes on hand now so I have something fun to wear at each different little event that happens during Halloween time but love the pattern great pattern and no complaints about it the second pattern that I used was for my fall fox jump skirt with the quick sew 4138. This is a very easy pattern and when I tried this one on it was so comfortable. I really think it is a perfect pattern for your Thanksgiving dress because it fit really nicely. I love how flowy this skirt was. I love that it just has the open top so I can put like a nice stretchy t-shirt underneath. That way when I eat a ton of food during Thanksgiving, you don't have to worry about feeling like a stuffed sausage pretty much. Cause that's the worst, especially when you want to eat more and your pants don't fit. And I tried it on and I liked it actually without the petticoat on this one as well. I did put a petticoat to show the fullness of the skirt, but it really doesn't need it. It actually looks really nice and elegant, just worn casually. Actually that A-line petticoat pattern that I hauled in my haul video that I just posted, that might look kind of nice underneath it if you have that pattern, especially if you want just a little more flair to it. But for me personally, I liked it just as it was. But once again, it was an easy pattern. I liked how it was quick to sew up. So for that one, I definitely recommend that pattern. Then I ended up making a reversible World of Warcraft apron with the Butterick 4585. This one I do not have to show you guys. It was given away, but the person absolutely loved it. And it's just a basic general apron pattern. There wasn't anything too difficult about it at all for the pattern itself. But if you are adding all the filigree and all the, the little details from the logo, that part itself might be a little difficult if you're cutting it out and whatnot. And you don't have the die cut machine to use to cut it out. But the pattern itself was very easy. So if you're a beginner, that's a really good beginner project to do just on its own, just doing the apron by itself. And in the video I made, I technically kind of made it like I was adding a lining to it. So that's a good way to learn how to do that as well. If you're also a beginner and you've never lined anything before. So that's a good one to practice on. So it is an older pattern, but definitely it was great. Loved it. Recommend it. Then I ended up making my Lolita dress with the McCall 6800. And it was my Atelier Boz inspired Lolita dress. Now when I really wish I was able to try on while I was making it, especially with that collar piece that I had kind of made up myself. And once I tried it on, just how I figured I wish I put the waist ties a little bit higher so they went more at my waist and not so low because I do have a 
a little bit of a high natural waist, not too high, but a little bit. And I did wish I put an interfacing into the collar itself to make it a little more stiff because once I had it actually on me, it was a little too flimsy. So next time I would definitely go back and add some interfacing there. And it did need to be adjusted just a little bit. The bottom black border that I had on the dress as well, it did sit a little funny once I had it on, mainly because the bottom of the skirt is cut into a curve and I cut out a rectangular strip. So it was matching a straight edge to a curved edge, which made it lay a little bit funny. So if anything, what you could do is just add length to the bottom of the coat skirt piece portion and add the width of the strip with a little bit of seam allowance, of course, and cut that out and then cut off that strip off the bottom and then cut out your pieces with that strip, like so. And then I think that would lay a lot better. Hopefully that makes sense. So like I said, if you're going to replicate the one that I made in the video using the pattern that I had posted in the link below that video, definitely cut it out, try it on your neck and make sure it sits right on you in paper form first and then maybe cut it out in like a muslin or like scrap fabric and then try it again with the with a little bit of interfacing so that you know that for sure if it really fits good around your neck. But since I wasn't using thicker fabrics too, that did alter the fit a little bit. So if you are trying to replicate how I did in my video by making it into a dress, make sure you try and do a mock-up beforehand with scrap fabric or anything else to see how it actually fits you to adjust because this pattern was made for thicker fabrics. It just needed a few more tweaks, but I couldn't tell just because I couldn't actually put it on at the time, especially that one that one had a very cinched waist and I did not have a very cinched waist at that time. I was full on belly. But besides all the tweaks and everything, I think if I just did the basic pattern, it would have been very easy to put together. It wasn't too hard of a coat to make, but I like the pattern. I would definitely use it again for sure. Maybe next time I'm actually making a coat with it. Then there was the new steampunk Lolita blouse that I made using the McCall 7071, which I actually have right here behind me. And I love this blouse. I was definitely pleasantly surprised with how this blouse came out with the fit itself. I just loved how it fit me. It was a perfect fit. It fit like a glove, but not too tight, not too loose. It had a great length to the shirt itself because I don't like shirts that are too short. And at the same time, I don't want them too long because then I look too frumpy. But this was such a perfect fit blouse. It kind of reminded me just how the fit was with the Simplicity 8444 going along with the fit because I really like the way that one fit as well. But it was really easy to sew up. Um, if anything, it was a little difficult going around that collar bib part, attaching that to the bodice, which is right here where the ruffle is. It was just a little difficult with that, with those corners, but other than that, it was very easy to sew up very quick and I'm happy with how it came out. Then to finish off with the rest of the dress that I made, the jacket was also the McCall 7071. And although I didn't add the collar on it, the jacket itself wasn't too bad. I like the fit of the sleeves. It was a bit baggy on the actual top of the jacket part. And then the waistband was pretty tight once I finally got to put it on. So I definitely needed to do adjusting there because you can see when I turn around, it does droop and like get a little baggy in the back. So as far as the top part, it needs a smaller size, but the waistband fit me almost tight. So that was just an adjustment that I would have had to make on my part if I tried it on before I made it. But otherwise, the gathers and tail coat in the back were really nice. I like the way that complemented the whole thing together. And then last to go with this dress was the Simplicity 2207 for the dress. And this dress I liked a lot. The only thing I would definitely change next time is the waistband. I didn't like how it really fit. It looked pretty, but it was very confusing to put together. Somehow I messed up the sides of the skirt at the top. They were too long, so I don't know why it didn't match up perfectly with the waistband, but I trimmed them off and everything was fine. Otherwise, it didn't affect anything. And then I just think if you're going to do that method, definitely with the elastic, cut it maybe another inch or so so that it's a little more snug because it feels like it just fits. It doesn't feel like it's going to hold on for very long. 
if I start to move a lot or anything or I'm walking a lot I feel like it'll start to go down and then once that elastic maybe starts to wear in a little bit it might not hold up very well so I would definitely cut off some of that length of the elastic just so it gives a more snug fit to the skirt waistband since the skirt is a little bit heavy for that amount of elastic. But otherwise, I would probably just change the waistband in general, maybe do an elastic all the way around. I am 5'4", so the skirt just hits the floor on me. So if you are a little bit taller, it will sit a little higher than it does on myself. I think it actually kind of would start to drag on the floor a little bit but it doesn't bother me too much, so I don't mind the length at all. But just for future reference, the length is a touch long if you're on the shorter side. But the rest of the skirt is beautiful, I love it. And that completes this pattern review. Overall, I think they were all really good patterns. I was happy with all of them. I love how everything came out pattern-wise, aside from the few things that I've adjusted and added myself. And after doing so many, it's definitely helping me get the hang of doing all these different patterns now. So it's making me a little more confident to try something a little harder or have more ideas to switch up certain things and like mix and match patterns and things like that. So that makes me excited to make more costumes and outfits and stuff that hopefully one day I'll find a place to wear all these things too. Thankfully, I have two little girls, so when they grow up, I hope they appreciate a full closet of dress up clothes. I will leave all the links down below for all the videos of the patterns that I reviewed today. Give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.